All month long, we're going to be talking about uh, what you see right here, your new playlist. Uh, 2023 was, it was a pretty good year for music, actually. Uh, we saw everyone from Olivia Rodrigo to Kendrick Lamar to Billie Eilish, Harry Styles, your artists of choice. There were a lot of different people who topped the charts at times, but what should be no surprise is that Spotify listed uh, Taylor Swift as this year's uh, top artists with more than, I'm, I'm just reading the stats, 26 billion streams, 26 billion streams for Taylor Swift. There are not a million people in Kansas City. So uh, good, good job, Taylor. That, that, that is impressive. Uh, the most popular album of the year, it wasn't even a new album. It was Bad Bunny's album from two years ago, uh, which is titled... A Summer Without You, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that in Spanish. The actually album, the, the album is in Spanish, but uh, that, that was the top art album. Something I found fascinating is that Spotify's research team, they found something out about all of you. So most of you fit into the category of Gen Z. Um, and according to Spotify's research team, I'm just going to read you this quote, Gen Z, they tend to embrace moods looking for playlists and songs that best describe the mood or the moment that, you're, that they're in. So in other words, according to the data, if we look at age demographics, your age demographic is most likely to say, I want sad music. Uh, I, I, I want music that helps me through a breakup. I want music that helps me through this difficult time that I'm going through. Uh, I want music that helps me get motivated, whatever it is, you, you would be most likely to find mood music. Now, whether you use Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, whatever, and whether you like rap music, country music, Spanish music, whatever your preference is, uh, chances are that in 2023, you probably had a few songs stuck in your head. And we titled this series, Your New Playlist, uh, to kind of play off the idea of how music can get stuck in our head, but we don't actually want to talk about music. We don't actually want to talk about songs or lyrics. We want to talk about the thoughts and the ideas and even the beliefs that can get stuck in our head. Uh, chances are that we all have certain thoughts that kind of make up our mental playlists. What do you think about on a day to day? What makes up or what takes up most of your mental energy? What takes up uh, what you think about and worry about the most? We all have thoughts. Uh, we have thoughts about God. Maybe some of us think that he's good. Some of us think that he's not good. Some of us think that he's real. Some of us think that he's not real. We have thoughts about other people. You naturally have other people who you have a positive opinion of, and then you have other people who you have a negative opinion of. You don't prefer them. You have thoughts about the people who are sitting at your table right now. And then we also have thoughts about ourselves, uh, thoughts that run through our heads like, man, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not pretty enough, talented enough, smart enough, strong enough. Uh, I should be better by now. Why do I keep struggling with this? Maybe I'm just never going to get better. We have thoughts about pressure, uh, dealing with all the stuff that we naturally deal with in life. Things like, man, I really need to perform. I really need to achieve. Otherwise, I might not amount to everything that I want to. We have thoughts about isolation, things like, man, I, I, I wonder if anyone really likes me. Maybe no one likes me. I feel all alone. Or maybe you know, well, I, there are people who like me, but there's a voice in the back of your head that kind of worries. But if they, if they really knew who I am, or if they really found out what I'm really like, if, if, if they really found out what I struggle with, if they, if they really saw me in the embarrassing moment, in the worst moment, would they still like me. We, we all have various thoughts, various ideas that kind of just live in our brain and kind of make up our mental playlist. The list can go on forever. Uh, my point is this. We all have thoughts, beliefs, ideas that get stuck in our mind. And whether you realize it or not, the thoughts that you have actually set the course for your life. Like the things that you think about on a regular basis, they literally set the direction for the life that you experience. What you think about yourself is significantly more important than what other people think about you. And I know for many of us, like what makes up a lot of our mental energy is, oh, what is everyone else gonna think about me, you know, in social settings like this, where it's like, I don't wanna say the wrong thing, I don't wanna wear the wrong thing, I don't wanna look the wrong way. Like, what do other people think about me? That, that's something we think about a lot, but what actually matters more than that is what you think about you. This is why we sometimes hear the really tragic stories of very attractive, successful people 
who end up getting into self-destructive patterns or they commit self-harm or sometimes even suicide because you can achieve everything you want. Like you can get all the money you want, all the influence you want, all the girls, all the guys, all the relationships. Like you can be, everyone can think of you as so attractive, so successful. I promise you can reach success. And yet, the way you think about yourself is gonna determine how you actually treat yourself. The way you think about God is gonna determine what kind of relationship you do or don't have with him. One ancient Christian writer, uh, they said it this way. I'm gonna show you a verse from Romans chapter eight, verses five and six. It says, those who are dominated, so pe people who are dominated by the sinful nature, they think about sinful things, okay? So you can kind of see the connection to your brain here. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind, it leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. I particularly want you to notice the contrast in verse six. Uh, the author, it's a gentleman by the name of Paul of Tarsus, lived a couple thousand years ago. He says that uh, when you let your sinful nature control your mind, by the way, what is your sinful nature? Your sinful nature is, uh, it's just you all disconnected from God. It's you all by yourself. It's, it's the you that does not consider what does God have to say about this? What does God think about this? And this is just when you take ideas or beliefs from either yourself, from people around you, and you just adopt them, your, your sinful nature, you left all by yourself, you end up having thoughts, Paul says, that lead to death. But on the contrary, he says, when you let the spirit control your mind, that actually leads to life and peace. I think a really good question to ask yourself, like a really good filter, if you wanna know, hey, the thoughts that I have in my brain, um, are, are, are they actually from me? Are they helping me or are they hurting me? I think a good question to ask yourself is this, and we'll put it on the screen. Do the thoughts that run through your mind usually lead to a sense of peace or to something else? Do they usually lead to fear or to worry? Do they lead to anxiety and depression? Do they lead to shame or jealousy, insecurity or anger? Because if so, then maybe it's time for a different playlist. The Apostle Paul, the guy who wrote this passage that we're looking at, he had a number of things to say about how important your mind is. I wanna show you a, a list of sentences that he said really fast. We'll go to the next slide. He said that we, talking to Christians, we have the mind of Christ. On another, uh, in another time, he said, we take captive every thought, every thought that we have, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Another time, he said, guys, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And in another instance, he said, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Over and over again, you can read in your Bibles, uh, particularly in the New Testament, passages that talk about how important your mind is because your mindset, what you think about God, yourself, people, it is ultimately going to either help you in life or it's gonna hurt you. What you think about God, what you think about other people, what you think about yourself, it, it's ultimately gonna determine how successful you are when it comes to relating to God, when it comes to your, your relationships with people, your friendships, your dating relationships, and when it comes to how you see and treat yourself. Because your mindset is so important, we basically wanted to take January, kind of at the start of the new year, you're all still in the same grade. So I know for, for many of you, your uh, year doesn't necessarily feel like a reset, but we wanted to start 2024 by just talking about how important our mindset is as Jesus followers. Uh, and we aren't gonna be able to cover everything that the Bible says, we never are uh, over the span of a couple weeks, but we are going to speak to some specific mindsets that we think are gonna be particularly helpful for you as a Jesus follower. And there are several ways that you can follow along with us. Uh, we'll throw a slide up on the screen just so you can kind of see what I think you should do this month. First thing is obviously by just being here at service, okay? When you are here at service and then uh, we're gonna be at tables and every week will look a little different in terms of how we interact with each other. Today, we're only gonna interact with each other one time. In a couple minutes, I'm gonna be done with teaching. We'll have one discussion question that we'll all talk about and then that'll be it. Other weeks, it'll look a little differently. But uh, we have you at tables because oftentimes, uh, what you believe often just has a lot to do with who you're around. 
whether or not your thoughts are positive or negative, whether or not your mindset is helpful or hurtful, oftentimes it just has to do with who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are the actual voices, like the physical external voices that you are around? So we think it would be helpful if you're here and we think it would be helpful if you try to connect with the people uh, who you're around. The other way that you can follow along, like Raylene said, is by joining our Bible reading plan. And I would actually argue uh, you joining that plan on the Bible app and trying to read every single day, I would argue that might be more important than you listening to these teachings. Because I'm only gonna, we're only gonna give a couple weeks of teaching uh, and you can only hear that one time a week. But with the Bible app, you can actually read the inspired scriptures, what we believe to be the words of God. You can read those every single day. I believe most of the devotionals are one verse a day. They're gonna be related to the big overall theme that we're doing. And then there's gonna be like a short devotional that maybe will make sense of the passage or help you apply it to your life. So I think you could follow along there, but perhaps the most important first step that you could take is to start by just asking God for his help with this. I wanna go back to the verse that we started with, Romans chapter eight, verses five and six. Uh, if you really just notice verse six, so kind of in the middle, you can see the number six, says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Now, fun fact, there's a lot that's happening in Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight is probably... Um, I don't know where to rank it, but it's up there in terms of one of the most, one of the, one of the densest pieces of writings that we have from this point in Christian history. Uh, the Apostle Paul, Romans is this awesome letter where he talks about a lot of different things. And uh, Romans chapter eight is kind of the, the, the middle, the central point of the letter. So uh, there, there's a lot that's going on here, but really what I just want you to notice in verse six is Paul says, the way you get what he calls life and peace in your mind, the way you develop patterns of thinking that are helpful, that are beneficial, that are godly, that are productive, the way you get there in your mind is, notice the second verse in verse six, or the second sentence in verse six, by letting the spirit control your mind, by letting the spirit take control. Now, to be clear, this does not mean that you stop thinking for yourself. God gave you a brain, he expects you to use it. No, what I mean is that if you will let the spirit, the spirit of God, that is, God himself, if you will let the spirit of God take control, notice that God actually wants to give you a mind that experiences what Paul calls life and peace. God actually wants everyone in this room to live their life with a positive mindset. God wants you to live your life with thoughts that are helping you grow, not hurting you from growing or from experiencing a good life. God doesn't want anyone in this room, like, yes, God does not want anyone in this room to live under a cloud of shame or worry or fear or frustration or anger. God doesn't want anyone in this room living life believing you can never change, you're never gonna get better, your life's never gonna improve, you don't have anything to offer, you don't have a purpose. Like God does not want any of us in here to live with thoughts like that that dominate our head. And yet for so many of us, if we were honest, and I'm not even gonna, like you don't need to share this with anyone, um, uh, well, at least at this point, if we were honest with ourselves, the thoughts, the ideas that make up our head, or th th that kind of make up our mental playlist, the bad thoughts, the scary thoughts, they are the, actually the ones that dominate how we think about ourselves or how we think about our lives. For some of us, the voice of shame or the voice of worry or the voice of anger it is the first voice that you hear in the morning when you wake up, and it's the last voice that you hear before you go to sleep. It's not gonna get better. You're always gonna be this way. No one's ever really gonna love you, like you. You're, 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 you're not going to amount to anything. And yet, even though that's what makes up our mental playlist, Jesus is famous for saying, one of his most famous statements is found in Matthew's account, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary. Uh, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. That includes a rest for your mind.
So obviously, I, I hope you're at services, and I hope the teachings are helpful, and I really do think that you should join the Bible reading plan, and that you should try every single day to just open up the Bible app and, and read the verse and read the devotional. Um, but I would say today, like today, when you go home, if you have your own room, go into your room, close the door. If you don't have your own room, use the bathroom, and just take a minute to ask God to help. Ask God to highlight the thoughts in your mind that are actually hurting you more than they're helping you. And then ask God over the course of January to speak to you uh, this month as you read his word and as you sit in services. Because if you, if you don't ask God, if you don't actually say, hey God, I need your help with this. Um, if you could change your mindset all by yourself, like you would have done it by now. If, you, if, if life was as easy as think happy thoughts and be happy, then we would all be happier and none of us would ever overthink negative things. But the reality is that's just not how life works. That's not how every season of life works. That's not even how you work as a human being. This is why in Romans 8, 6, Paul says the path to mental peace, to life and peace in your mind, it starts by allowing the spirit to take the lead. This is where this is different from just positive thinking or having a really strong willpower uh, or manifesting or however else other traditions or mindsets or, or kind of mindset coaches like wanna frame this. As Christians, we believe that we go to our creator for help. I'm saying that if you wanna live with less fear, less worry, less stress, less shame, less anxiety, I think step one is to ask God, can you help? Like you do that by yourself on your own time. Try to connect with your creator and ask him, can you take the lead? Can you show me how your thoughts are actually supposed to shape my mind? And then you jump into the reading plan and you do that on a regular basis and you're here at services. Um, and obviously this month, we're gonna talk about some of the mindsets that we see in the life of Jesus that are particularly helpful for us becoming people who are more like Jesus and for us becoming the people who he has created us to be. So here is how uh, we're gonna end today. I told you that we are gonna have a brief conversation at our tables. Uh, I'm gonna throw up one discussion question on the screen. One discussion question on the screen and then I'm gonna preface it before we talk about it, okay? The discussion, the discussion question is what is one thing that you tend to overthink. And we put a bunch of options up there for you so that you can just pick one or you have something else that you're like, oh, it's actually this. It could be your family, it could be your friends. It, when it comes to other people, oftentimes it's about safety, health, provision. Or are we, I, I don't know if we're like gonna do well, my family in terms of money. Uh, it could be your future. It could be school, grades. I know that's a big one when, uh, yeah, I know that's a big one for everyone in the room. Sports, relationship, conflicts in your family. Maybe there's just a lot of drama that's going on right now. It could be societal problems that just really bother you. And I want to be clear here, okay? Because I know for some of you, you're like sitting at tables with people you know. So it's like, oh, cool. I'll, I'll just answer the question. It's not super awkward. For others of you, you don't know everyone at your table. And I, I get 100% how awkward it can be to talk to people who you don't know uh, and, and have a conversation. So I want to be very clear. I'm not asking you to confess your sins. I am not asking you to get all vulnerable, all right? It can be a short, brief answer. The question is not supposed to make anyone cry. If you want to cry, you can cry, but you're not supposed to like, uh, you know, have... Don't feel like there's a lot of pressure here. Uh, it's a simple, what is one thing that you tend to overthink? This will probably be semi-easy to answer for most of us in the room. And I'll go first, just to give you an example. What is one thing that I tend to overthink? For me, uh, what comes to mind is it would probably be my family's safety. Uh, just when I think about wife, kid, hey, how are they gonna be safe? Sometimes, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but I'm on YouTube and my YouTube algorithm just decides, let's show Anthony all the worst possible things that can happen in the world. And uh, it can be easy for me to just kind of mentally go like, man, how, how am I gonna keep him safe? God, there's so many bad things that can happen. And you know, I have to fight that from spiraling into worry or fear or anxiety about that. It's, it's that simple. Your answer doesn't even need to be that long, okay? Your answer can be like, oh, I worry about my friend because they're sick. I worry about school and grades because my parents, uh, you know, they, they expect a lot out of me, like they expect straight A's or whatever it is. Uh, you don't have to go super in depth. And as a matter of fact, uh, leaders in the room, can you answer first? Sorry, I didn't tell you that. Uh, but can you answer first uh, just so that everyone can kind of get an idea of 
what is one thing that you tend to overthink? Uh, if there is a leader with a badge at your table, they'll go first. If there's not a leader with a badge, with an external badge at your table, I believe there is one brave person at your table uh, who has a badge in their heart. And uh, they will answer first and then uh, just take a couple seconds. Doesn't need to be long. What's one thing you tend to overthink? We want to get a gauge on it. And then I will close our time out. Thanks for participating. Um, my guess is, depending on how many people got to go and share, is that uh, someone else might have said something similar to you. And uh, if that was the case, part of the reason that we asked this question is because sometimes it's helpful to just know that other people are just thinking about the same stuff. Like, man, school, there is so much pressure associated with it and your future and college and all of that. Sports, depending upon kind of where they fall in the category of importance for your life, for some of you, a sport is a leisure activity. For others of you, that's your college scholarship. And the amount of pressure that is associated with that, it can be heavy at times. Uh, for some of you, you know, family, there's just stuff that's going on that maybe not everyone's going to understand, but it's like, hey, just family or friendships, relationships that you have. Uh, we all have things, and they change from season to season in life. We all have things that we can overthink. We all have things where it's like, you know what, it's probably not doing any good at this point for me to just keep thinking about this, and yet what I can't stop doing is just going over the situation again and again, going over the conversation again and again, going over that moment or going over just how bad things are again and again. And yet one of the helpful things is telling that to God and telling it to other people. And you know, like I said, in this moment, maybe it's not the uh, opportunity for you to go you know, say everything, but um, I, I can say that every leader in the room, every person uh, with a badge, we would be more than happy to just listen if you're like, can I get something off my chest? And if you want advice, we'll give it. If you want input, if you want help, yeah, we, we can pray for you. Or if you just want us to listen, you can say that too. Um, just want you all to know that. If you join the reading plan, there's gonna be one verse that shows up again and again, and I wanna read it. We don't have it. I'm sorry, I, I forgot. Um, this is Psalm 94, verse 19. This is in the NLT. Um, by the way, if you normally don't read your Bible and you jump on the reading plan on the Bible app, uh, I don't know, maybe like uh, ESV, NIV, NLT in terms of translations, you can ask us, we'll, 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 uh, don't read something if you don't understand it. If you read a translation and you're like, oh, I don't really get it, just choose a different translation. Um, this way, it, it'll help you make sense. We're spoiled in the English language in terms of how many good translations we have. This is the verse that is gonna show up again and again in the reading plan. This is from the NLT, Psalm 94, verse 19. It says, when doubts filled my mind, and you can even insert doubts with something else. When anger filled my mind, when insecurity filled my mind, when, when, when anxiety filled my mind, when hopelessness filled my mind, when, when doubts filled my mind, your comfort, this person is praying to God, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. When doubts filled my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. I hope, uh, I hope that by the end of January, um, it doesn't take a month for you to reprogram your mind. It takes longer than that. But I hope that by the end of January, we all get better at the habit of going, uh, when I'm hurting in here, I can find hope in here. That when mentally I'm just, I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed, I'm afraid. When I can't seem to get past the past, that there actually is a place that you can go where you're gonna get better. And it's, it's Jesus. It is connecting with him, talking to him, and listening to him, and let, letting his truth become the playlist for your minds, if you will. That is, I, I hope that by the end of this month, we all get a little bit better at going, when doubts fill my mind, your comfort, God. Going to you, going to your word, going to your people. Your comfort gave me a renewed hope and cheer, joy, gladness, excitement, all of it.